Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Sue Clement is sharing of her words of wisdom with us. Sue Clement works with B2B service-based entrepreneurs who want to expand their visibility, increase their impact, and scale from six to seven figures. Sue is an international speaker, best-selling author, and marketing expert. Uh, VBN members and guests, if you have questions in the course of Sue's talk, would you please type them into the chat? And at a lull in uh, Sue's presentation, I will ask her uh, for her blessing to pose your questions to her at those times. The video will be recorded uh, and uh, published tomorrow, uh, probably around about noon. Uh, so you don't have to take notes if you don't want to. Uh, you can rely on receiving the link to the video uh, tomorrow around about noonish. Sue, are you all ready to rock? And roll. Well, take it away. She's all yours. <laughs> okay. Hey, well, thanks, Roger, very much for having me, inviting me into the Vancouver Business Network. It's always such a great group, and it's a pleasure to be here tonight. And also, thanks for everyone who's watching us live and, you know, spending your evening with us. I really appreciate you doing so. And if you're watching the replay, that's kind of cool, too. Thank you for joining us. So tonight, I'm talking all about how to fill your pipeline with hot prospects using organic social media outreach. You know, social media marketing is a real wave these days, and particularly with our new COVID reality where we can't go out and network like we used to, it's even more relevant. And it is a powerful tool for us to be able to connect with people globally. So if you have a, a boundless, a boundaryless company, in other words, your clients can be anywhere in the world, it certainly is the way to go. And even if you are local in your own town or community, you absolutely can use social media marketing as a way to fill your pipeline with prospects, as a way to get those prospects, you know, get the leads, convert them to prospects, and ultimately get clients from social media marketing. And so that's what I'm talking all about tonight. And as business owners, let's be honest, we are here to grow our business. We are here to have a profitable, thriving company that makes money. And so I will tell you right off the bat, I have no um, hesitation to talk about how much revenue you can create because that's what the business is for. Uh, yes, you can share your gift with the world. Yes, you can help thousands and hundreds of people with what your services are. But ultimately, if your business isn't profitable, you're not going to be staying in business. So I tend to talk about making money in your business. And that's what really tonight's topic is all about is how can you make more money, get more clients through social media marketing. So you know, I want to let you know it is possible and my clients use social media marketing a lot and I'm just outstanding by the results that they're getting. It's like the new age networking in a way because in the past you'd go to a networking event and you'd have to dress up, show up, you know, get there and you never knew who was going to be in the room and some networking events were great. You have serendipity and all the, you know, hot prospects or referral partners or joint venture opportunities. You'd connect with them and you'd come back thinking, wow. That was an awesome networking event. And then other networking events you go to and they really weren't your target market. They really, you know, didn't have a lot in common with, with you or your clients or your prospects. They really weren't hot hot prospects at all. And you think, wow, wow, I spent, you know, an hour or two getting there, dressing up, all the rest of that. So sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Well, this is the beauty of social media marketing is you can actually target who you connect with. And so it is really an efficient way to get more clients faster. And I really want you to kind of hold that image for yourselves tonight, because how can you get more clients through social media marketing? That's what we're all talking about. So I have a question for you right off the bat. So imagine, I want you to imagine if you could double 2x or more your revenues in the next 90 days. Would that be interesting to you? Would you want to do that? And what impact would that be in your business? So just pause for a moment. You know, and it could be even more than 2x. You could 5x or 10x. Yes, that is possible. So think of where you are in your business today. And if you were to double your revenues, 
how would that impact you? And just type in the chat. Let's get some conversation happening here. Type in the chat how that would impact you. Would it be exciting? What more would you do with the extra revenue? And of course, with revenue, we'd expect to get some profit with that as well. And when I ask question about, ask this question to people is how would you like to increase your revenues in a big way, not just incrementally small little growth. I'm talking about exponential growth. Some people go, I'd love to, but, and they find, kind of get that sense of feeling maybe it would bring them into overwhelm because they don't have a system in place. They don't have a methodology of how to actually get those clients. You know, we all want more business, but often we're struggling because we don't know how to get the more business. We don't know where we can get those clients. So let me ask the question again here differently. So imagine if you could 2x your revenue or more leveraging your everyday interactions on social media. Now, would that be of interest to you? And I'm hoping that the answer is hell yes. <laughs> and you can type that in the chat too, if that is. And if you could actually do that consistently, wouldn't that be amazing? I mean, the biggest complaint I hear from people when they talk about social media is that it takes up so much time and we are glued to our phones. You know, we have them everywhere. We, we check them. I, I don't know. I think I heard some stat that people look at their Facebook, they check it like, you know, an, a, a crazy amount, like hundreds of times a day that we're looking at this phone, we're kind of scrolling through and seeing things. Well, it is a time gobbler and it could be a time waster. But on the flip side of it, if you begin to use your social media marketing oh, wow. in a powerful way, someone said, oh, wow, wow. cool. I'm not sure what they're rowing about, but thank you. Uh, but if you could use your time on social media and instead of just being entertained or enlightened or bored or vacant brainless on it you are actually bringing prospects to you now would that not be a great thing i think the answer of course would be yes and now some of you might be going well is it really possible well i want to share with you something that i did last fall i made a challenge for myself that i want to bring in a hundred thousand dollars in 90 days that was my challenge. And I'll let you know that I did it through social media marketing. That's how I got my clients. That's how I got my prospects. And actually I brought in 101K in 84 days. So I want you to realize that it is possible for every one of you who has a thriving, successful, profitable business, you'll have, obviously have to have something that you're selling of value is that you can leverage the power of social media marketing to grow your business. So let's get started and I'll share with you how to do that. I think everyone probably should be saying, okay, Sue, how do we do that? So the first thing I wanna talk about is making connections. And really, when we think about social media marketing and whoever has some noise in the background, if you could please mute yourself, that would be appreciated. So when we think about social media marketing, it really is a tool that we want to use to connect. And once again, we can connect with so many people, but it's really about being strategic about our connections. And when we start connecting with the right people, we can grow our business quite successfully. And here's an example that Michelle, um, she's a past uh, client of mine in one hour, one hour, because this is the speed of social media marketing I want to share with you. In one hour, she made 20 connections. And of those 20 connections, she booked a podcast, whoops, she booked a podcast guest, she scheduled three sales appointments and landed one client. So you can see the power of this. In very, very condensed amount of time, you can make tons of connections. So let me share with you exactly how you can do that. So what we want to do is we want to make targeted connections. We don't want just every Tom, Dick and Harry, much as like the old networking events, when you show up in person, there are kind of like a little bit of everybody there, but we really want to instead target them. And we talked about this earlier in our pre-work is about finding that ideal target client. And in social media marketing, you absolutely can narrow down who you connect with so that they are your ideal prospect. And this is, I wanna take a little side note here because gosh, I can't talk about anything without talking about the challenges 
of knowing who your ideal client is. Most businesses struggle. They don't have a successful business or as, as successful as they could have because most companies struggle with this. We fall into the gap of wanting to work with anybody. You know, often when I ask people, who's your ideal client? They'll go like, anybody who'll pay me. And maybe you've actually thought that, if not said that in the past. So the more you can target your ideal prospect, whether you're using social media marketing or any other style of marketing, the more you narrow it down to that actual ideal target client, that ideal prospect, the more you narrow it down, the more successful you will be in growing your business. And of course, that's amplified on social media because you have such a broad range of people that you can connect with. If you don't know who you need to connect with, gosh, you probably won't connect with anybody or you'll be connecting with the wrong people. And so it's really relevant that you target your ideal, your ideal client. And when you do that and you know who they are and you know who you're trying to reach, that's when it begins to work for you. So let's talk about how you can do that. So of course, Facebook, and I'm, I'm going to use Facebook, I'll probably default to that word a lot, but it works the same on LinkedIn as well. LinkedIn tends to have kind of a different, slightly different nuance, but ultimately this strategy will work on either platform, Facebook or uh, LinkedIn, and you could probably use it on Instagram, although I must admit Instagram is not a, a platform that I love or use very often. My dog has an Instagram account. <laughs> He's more active on Instagram than I am. Now you figure that one out. Anyway, so we want to target our connections. And so, of course, with Facebook, we can accept friend requests and we get them all the time. And so people are often asking to be our friend. And here's the thing. If we are truly using Facebook for lead generation, we don't want to accept everybody's friend request. So this is where the targeting comes into play. And I want you to really be serious about who you will accept as a friend and who you won't. Now, I need to kind of do a sidestep here because I want to make this clear, is that I'm talking about using your profile, your personal profile in creating that community, creating those connections on your profile, not on your business page. You have more control on your profile. Now I know some of you be going, wait, so time out. I can't do business on my profile. Facebook will shut me down. I'll be put into Facebook jail. Anybody feeling that? Well, here's the thing. You're right. We can't overtly solicit business on our profile. We can't say here, here's the link, click this and buy it today. Yes, Facebook rules will shut you down for that. But you can make connections, 5,000 of them, on your profile. And you obviously, if you're doing this for business, you want to have those 5,000 people to be prospects rather than, you know, run of the mill people. And yes, you can, <laughs> I say run of the mill, that sounds terrible. But yes, you can have, you know, with Facebook, you have the ability to create groups or lists. And so you can segment grandma and grandpa and your cousin and uncle Bob and all of those people. Definitely you can have Facebook friends because a lot of people say, well, I use Facebook for my kids and my family and my close friends and I want to post things that are a little bit more intimate with that group of people. Well then create lists and have a list for your private people but everyone else make them kind of for business. So if you're using your profile for business what we want to do is make sure that we're only connecting with people going forward that could be a prospect for us. So before you accept any friend request what you want to do is kind of check them out a little bit. So <laughs> that's really an important thing to do. And the same thing is if you send out a friend request, you also want to not just send friend requests to any Tom, Dick and Harry. You wanna check them out a little bit. You wanna see whether or not they're truly going to be a suitable person that you want to connect with. This is where the strategy comes into place. And so, yes, you can accept friend requests and Facebook is really good at making suggestions. They can say, hey, we think you know these people. Do you want to friend them? Well, before you just fly swat, yes, think it through. And same thing when people say, hey, I want to be your friend. Before you say yes, think about it. This is where you want to be more strategic with it. You want to make sure that there actually is a good matchup. Sue, so are we, you ready for uh, few, three, three quick questions? Three questions? Okay, I'll pause here. <laughs> All right. 
uh, what platforms are better used for growing your business in the engineering industry? Okay, so thank you. That's a great question. The answer is it depends who your ideal clients are. And so whether you choose Facebook or LinkedIn, you want to stop up there and think, who are you connecting with? If you're looking for a more professional person, um, and I don't mean that as an unprofessional professional, but more of a profession, like an engineer or a lawyer, an accountant, or a larger corporation. If you're selling to bigger businesses, CEOs, COOs, or C-suite people, then LinkedIn would probably be the better platform. So like anything, if you were to go to a networking event or place an ad in a paper or, you know, should anyone ever do that anymore, but you'd always go to the events where your ideal clients go. And so think about your ideal clients. Are they on Facebook or are they on LinkedIn? And it, once again, it would depend upon who your ideal client is. So I hope I answered that well enough. Sonia wants to know how much does your dog earn in a day on social, <laughs> on social networks? He gets two milk bones a day. <laughs> Overpaid. He's sleeping at my feet right now. He's not barking, so. Michael wants to know, how do you segment your, your Facebook friends? Um, from the rest of them, uh, in Facebook, you can create lists. And so um, just, just Google Facebook lists and it'll show you how to do that. And then that way, when you create a post that you want, just aunt and uncle and Bob and, you know, cousin Joe and whoever to see, then you would, uh, you would, you know, select that privacy setting that only they would see those personal images of you doing skinny dipping at the farm on the weekend or whatever. Um, so you could create a list for them. And if you Google that, you'll figure out how to do it. It's pretty quite, it's pretty straightforward how to do that. Okay. Any other questions? Nope. Done for now. Thank you, Sue. Okay. Thanks for jumping in there. All right. So yeah, please ask questions. So we're talking about targeting, whether we accept friend requests or whether we ask for friend, people to friend request us or in LinkedIn language, we'd say connection requests. We always want to target them because, you know, it's a big wide world out there. There's lots of different directions we can go, but we want to kind of have a, a little prospecting mind in mind. And I, I sometimes use the word hunting and some people find that offensive, but you know, ideally we're looking for the right fit for us. We want that market match. You know, we're looking to build our community of prospects, not just a community of people. 5,000 people that are just random people is not gonna really serve you well. So how do we go about doing that? Well, one of the things I do is I always vet I always kind of check out people. So for example, if I got a friend request from you today, what I would do, I would, before I say, yes, I'll be your friend, I will click on you, your profile. I'll go to your profile and I'll look at your profile. Now from that profile, I will look to see if you have a business page connected. If you don't, that's a real red flag for me because I don't know who you are. I don't know whether you have a business or don't have a business. And I'm looking to build connections with people who have businesses because I, my, my clients are business owners. So if you don't have, and this is just a little side note, write this one down, everyone. If your page is not connected to your profile, I highly recommend you immediately do that. The other thing, there's several places on your profile where you can talk about what you do. So there's the, um, the kind of the overview box and you can talk in that one line, you've got one sentence, you can say, you know, I help blank people with blank problems, give blank outcomes. You know, you can talk about what you do, or I'm a lawyer for underprivileged families, or I'm a financial advisor for whoever, whoever. So make sure that when people come to your profile, they know that you're a business owner and they know what you do and that you have a business because that's a free way to kind of promote who you are and what you do. So that's the first thing I look for is do they have a business page, Facebook page connected, and then a little bit about them. What can I find? And so then I look at their timeline. What are they posting? Are they taking themselves seriously? So this also lets you know about your own timeline. What's on your timeline? Is it all, you know, things about political, you know, weirdness in the world or challenges in the world? So people are seeing that and they're forming an opinion of you from that. And so if you're trying to build community, you might want to shift about what you put on that. And the whole thing about engagement posts and that we'll, we'll get to in a bit. But basically, 
I look at their profile. I see if they're a business owner. I look who all their friends they have. And if they have friends of my friends that are kind of of value and I kind of get a sense if they belong to that community, then they would be a good prospect for me. So I kind of vet them from those. And then based on that, if they have a page connected, I go look at their business page. And if their website's showing, I go look at their website. So that's how I do a very quick 30 second glance into someone's profile page and website to see whether I think hmm, they could be a prospect for me. And if they are, then I will friend them or accept their friend request. And so whether I'm accepting friend requests or I'm searching for people, that's the process that I go through. So you have to come up with your criteria for who you're looking to meet. What are some key indicators that you think that would be a potential prospect for me? So if your ideal clients are moms, or if they're single women over 50, or if they're young families, right? Um, or if they're business owners, you want to be looking for those cues on their profile before you accept or invite someone to be your friend. So that's how we kind of begin to connect. Now, where can you find these connections? Okay, if you're looking for them, of course, Facebook suggests people, you know, these people, maybe you like these people too, that you can do with the Facebook suggestions. Or you can do a little bit more and do some searching. So look at groups. So for example, if your ideal target client are young moms with families, there's lots of mom entrepreneur family groups out there. So you might join a Facebook group with your target profile in it. Now, of course, when you join a group, you want to make sure that you're following in line with the group rules. Some groups are community groups where everybody can post almost anything, which is great or some groups are more leadership groups in the sense that the owner of the group, the business owner who owns the group, kind of is more in control of what's allowed to be posting or not posting. But you can easily connect with people who are in different groups of interest groups of what you do. So perhaps, for example, I might look for a group, and I've done this on, it, on LinkedIn, Infusionsoft, because business owners who have Infusionsoft generally have a size of business that would be a good client for me. So that's one of my key indicators that I look for is Infusionsoft on LinkedIn. So I might join a, a group that has Infusionsoft. So think about what types of groups would your ideal clients join and you wanna join those groups too. Now, isn't that interesting? We go back to the ideal client and we keep coming back to that over and over and over in your business. And so that's why it's so key that you invest the time to get that handled and know who it is. But joining groups is one place. Um, events, sometimes like uh, this event, you know, people will post different events on Facebook and or on LinkedIn, and you can go and see who's going to that event. So if there is a conference in town and people were posting that they're going, you might want to put down that, join that group, that, pardon me, join that event as well, but then you have in something synergetically in common with the other people who have joined that event. Uh, another one to do is just anyone who likes or comments on your posts, on your page, as well as your profile. So there's lots of places that you can connect with people on Facebook and LinkedIn, and you want to ideally try and find connections that are more kind of in alignment with your ideal prospects before you start checking them out. But ultimately, when you decide to start marketing this and start making the connections, you want to really take the time to see, is this person a potential prospect? Could they be a client of mine? Do they have the profile, the, the things that my clients generally have? Because if you are targeting uh, women business owners, then you don't want to bother accepting or asking or inviting men to be your friend. Well, of course, unless you want to be dating or something, but you know, you can see where I'm going with that. If your ideal clients are young moms, well, you know, you don't want to invite someone who's 60 or 70 to be your friend. So you have to kind of think from that point of view, the more targeted you are, the more successful you'll be at actually moving on to our next step, because we're going to be diving into that. So, so time for a few questions. Okay, go for it. Uh, would you name your business page the same as your personal page? No. Um, your business page should be your business and your personal page should be you. And I call it a profile. That's how I distinguish it. Your profile is different from a page. 
Next question, how exactly how do I research people on LinkedIn? Also, when somebody sends me a Facebook invite, I try to check out their LinkedIn profile. Yeah, great one. You can absolutely click over to their LinkedIn profile to see what it looks like. Um, you know, you want to do a quick search. Don't spend 10 minutes per person. You have to quite get accustomed to doing it in a very quick way because you want to actually be trying to connect with people on an ongoing basis. Like I tell my clients, the ones that are really gearing up to it for revenue growth is to outreach to at least 10 people per day, add 10 or invite 10 new people to friend you, maybe 15, maybe 20. But if you're constantly doing that and you're inviting a volume of them, not everyone's gonna accept, which is fine. Um, and then when we get to our next step, you'll find not everyone will engage, which is fine, but it helps you begin to prospect. It begins that prospecting that keeps happening on a regular or consistent basis. Question from Marnie. Should you have different Facebook, LinkedIn page for the different businesses you are in? I would say you should have different business pages for the different businesses, but you only get one profile, which would be you. Okay. So one personal and different pages for each business. Yep. Thank you. All the questions for now. Okay. I'm glad that you guys are bringing them forth. Okay. So once we search and we know who we're asking or accepting, we want to make sure we assess and qualify, which I talked about. But the next step is we don't just fly swat accept or fly swat send. What we always want to do is send a message send a message. And the message could be something as simple as, hey, Bob, I see we're both the members of blank group, thought we should connect. Or, hey, Mary, I see we have lots of friends in common, thought we should connect. Or something along that line. So you always want to send a message out. Now, there's a couple reasons for this. The main reason is it tags it in Messenger for you. So it helps you keep track of the number of outreaches that you're making and it helps you know why you outreach to that person because you put it right in the message. The other thing too, on the flip side of that, when someone gets a friend request from you and they see the message from you, they're more likely to accept it and because they know who you are and you're not some creeper stalker guy from around the world somewhere. You actually made a point of reference that was you know, a, a synergistic point of reference that we have something in common. So always send a message when you ask or accept a friend request, okay? That's our connection strategy. Don't do it randomly and don't do it sporadically. Do it consistently. Pick a number that you feel comfortable with and outreach to those people every day. We all have 5,000 Facebook friends, so start building up towards that number. And yes, when people in your community want to be your friend and you look at them and they don't fit your profile, I know it can be really hard not to accept them, but to decline them. I had the biggest guilt over that, but I started declining them because I wanted to have a community that made sense for me, okay? So I wanna give you a quick um, kind of a foray on how you can also get some more engagements, which I call post engagements. Now in my course, I teach people six different types of Facebook posting and LinkedIn posting you can do that builds engagement, builds visibility and gathers leads for you. But I wanna give you this really quick one. This is only one of the six, but I wanna give you this quick one. An easy way to get people to engage with you that you can begin to understand that they're a good prospect for you is by asking a question. And you can use one of the Facebook blank posts, you know, they have the little colored ones in the background. And here's just a few samples to get your brain going. So if you were a sales coach, you might make this post. You're on a sales call, video or audio, or maybe you're, um, you know, if you're a sales coach, you might even be someone who does a Facebook training, Facebook live training or video training. That's a great way because anyone who answers that question is obviously potentially a prospect for you. Another one, when you're on stage, sneakers or heels. Uh, one of my colleagues, she's a, 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 a speaker trainer. And so she trains speakers to get on stages. So this is a good one. Anyone who answers that obviously has a desire to be on a stage. Uh, next home, house or condo, real estate agent or mortgage broker. Great question. People will answer that really quickly. You want to make sure that these engagement posts are really like yes, no, one, two, house or condo, really short, quick answers that people will engage with 
And then that gives you the opportunity to have a follow up with them. This is one that I use. Who, who am I connected here that's a coach, consultant, or expertpreneur? Those are my clients. And so I have this big Facebook community. I post that and I must have had 80 people respond to it. So that gave me 80 people that I could message out to and start a dialogue. Uh, here's another one. What's your number one most important goals this month? People put down what their goals hurt. It gave me an opportunity to have a good dialogue with them. And I've used this one as well as if I could sit down and talk with you over a cup of favorite beverage about something in business, what would you want to know? And people put those down. And that also, they answer it and gives me an idea of who's interested in growing their business and what would they like to know. So these engagement posts are really a cool way for you to get in front of your community and have them starting engaging with you that then gives you the opportunity to, of course, any comment on a post of yours, you should always like and comment back. But then it also gives you the opportunity that you can private messenger them and start a dialogue. So that's that strategy. And this is what actually Craig did. He filled his whole coaching program just through social media outreach and this type of engagement post. He got so many connections happening that he was able to set up appointments and fill his coaching program really simply just from this one strategy alone. So let's move on to engaging. So now that we've got those connections and we've kind of done some engagement posts on our, on our, on our profile and people are beginning to have a conversation with us, now what can we do to actually engage with them? Well, here's the first point. You want to talk to them like you would in person. You, you know, you're, they're real people. So this is where a lot of people go, ah, I hate social media marketing. Everyone's just pitching stuff at me. And you're absolutely right. We don't want to come across as an over, overly aggressive salesperson. We want to, you know, build a connection. These are real people. They're humans. So we need to have meaningful conversations with them so that we'll have meaningful connections with them. These are prospects. So sometimes people go, well, I don't know what to message with them. I can say, hey, thanks for accepting my friend request, but then what? And this is the whole point, is when someone accepts your friend request, you don't just leave it there and think, well, they'll just see my post now and they'll buy from me. That's not gonna happen, let's be honest. So once someone accepts your friend request, what you wanna do at that point is you wanna get the dialogue going. So you say, hey, send them a messenger saying, thanks for accepting my friend request and then ask them a question that's relevant to your ideal client. So for me, since I'm looking for business owners, I would say, you know, tell me how's the business going these days or what's working for you in business these days. So I'll ask like a softball, easy question. No different than if I was at a networking event standing next to somebody I just met, I'd say, hey, you know, how's business going for you? What's new in your business? What's happening? How are you handling the COVID thing? I would say all of those things in person. So I also say them in messenger. And so this is the goal that we want to do, is we want to begin to have these messenger conversations with people, that we get to know them, they get to know you. And then ultimately, the goal is to be able to take it off of messenger and have a live conversation with them and a sales conversation at that. But it starts by having the meaningful connections. So you don't want to make it all about you. So when someone accepts my friend request, I'm not going to send them back this whole, you know, I do this and I do that and you should buy my thing and here's the link to click and you can sign up today. We don't want to make it about us, right? We want to make it about them. And I just want to share this because I love this quote from Mary Kay. Um, Pretend everyone has a visible sign hanging around their neck saying, make me feel important. You know, I can't tell you enough when it comes to networking success, it really is about being other conscious. And so that's what we want to do when we're connecting with people. They're humans. They're, maybe we don't see them. Maybe we're just typing off words to them. But we really want to have that human connection. And the more human connection you have, the more likely you'll succeed in turning this lead into a prospect and ultimately into a client. So don't pitch, OK? Do not pitch, do not promote your services, do not say, buy this, okay? Don't wanna go there, all right? We don't want anyone to ever feel like there's a target on their chest. And I'm gonna bring this back into real world networking. You've gone to networking events and you, we've all had this experience where someone comes up to us and they're like handing the business card to us and all of a sudden they're trying to sell their shit to us. 
pardon my language there, but they're trying to sell their services or their products. And we haven't even identified that we were interested. So on social media marketing, it's the same way. Don't overtly pitch your thing. That's what's going to get people talking about you. That's what's going to get rejections. That's what people will unfriend you and unlike you because we never want to be seen as a weirdy sales, a, a, a salesy weirdo. I always get that backwards. All right. If you go to a networking event and you're just pitching your stuff, you're going to be a salesy weirdo. And nobody wants to have that experience, whether you do it in person or whether you do it through messenger it's very offensive. But now here's the thing. I promised you that you could make money through social media marketing. I promised you that you could get more connections through social media marketing. And you can. And this is where the magic happens. This is the Sue, before you get there. Can you sure. take a few questions? Sure. Okay. Hey, <laughs> okay. Michael wants to know he's at his Facebook friend limit. Should he start culling? Yes. Yes, and it's not, Michael, it's going to be a tough one to do. And this is what uh, a strategy that I've heard is, and I, I don't know, I don't, I don't do this, but I've heard it from some of my colleagues. Um, you know, every day we get people's birthdays and you might get like, you know, five or six birthdays, you know, so-and-so's birthday today. Well, what they do is when the birthday shows up, it get, you know, if you're using the birthday strategy in the sense to outreach to someone saying, hey, happy birthday, you can look at their profile and look at their business page and decide whether you want them to stay or whether you want to unfriend them. I know it sounds really crude <laughs> unfriending people on their birthday, but it is kind of interesting because it, as they show up, you can do that. Um, so as I said, something I, I haven't done myself, but it is a strategy that could work. Another way to do is just sit there and go through your list, you know, unfriend 10 people a day so that you can invite 10 new people to connect with you. And so, yes, you should call your list. Two questions from John. Yeah. Uh, if you unconnected a LinkedIn connection, will that person still see your posts and updates or is the unconnection immediate? I, you know, I'm not going to be definitive in that answer. I, my hunch is that they will no longer see you anymore, but I could be wrong on that. So I'm, I'm not 100% sure. You'll have, I'll be honest. You'll have to go check that out. Second question. Is there a way to mass message people on LinkedIn to start a conversation without having to put everyone into a group chat? Okay. This is a personal bias of mine. I do not like it when someone messages me with a whole bunch of people. Uh, in LinkedIn, you can do it. Uh, in the past, at least you've been able to do it. Uh, in Facebook, you can do it. Whenever I get lumped into a group, kind of message like that, I it bothers me. And I get quite kind of pissed off about it. And I will leave that group. Like I'll, you know, opt out of the message sequence. And sometimes I'll unfriend the person because that's not like, that's almost like pitching. I don't care for that. So I think that, you know, whether you craft a good message and you cut copy paste and drop it and they use a text, um, you know, and drop in the message over and over. I think the individuality of messaging people is way better than sending a market message out to 50 or 20 or 30 or hundred people at one time. So that's just my personal bias. Thank you, Sue. No more questions. <sighs> okay. So we're talking about making money. So let me just kind of go back and recap a little bit to make sure we're all up on the same page. So the goal is we want to add more connections. We want to build our community. We do that by accepting connections or inviting connections. And before we do either of those, we always want to make sure that they are potential prospects, that we've gone and we've looked at their page, their profile, their website, you know, the other social media platforms, we've checked them out. And if we think that they kind of could fit in in a rough sense of who our ideal client profile is, at that point, we send them a message accepting or inviting. And the message, of course, would be appropriate. When we send someone a message inviting, when they do uh, connect with us, and we always get the message through Facebook, it tells us, at that point, we obviously want to continue the conversation. And so, we always want to find ways to get that conversation going. We want to get that engagement happening. And when we engage with people, we want to make it human. We don't want to be all about us. And we absolutely do not want to pitch. 
you know, treat them like real people and start the dialogue happening. And so what happens is you get this back and forth dialogue. Now, with LinkedIn and with Facebook, don't expect that like, they're going to, you know, you send them a message, you're sitting there waiting for them to send it back. They might not see it for a day, a week, right? So don't be offended if someone doesn't respond right away give it some time and so so don't don't be panicked about that don't feel like oh they didn't message me it didn't didn't work that's not necessarily the case you have to allow that facebook and linkedin people will see it when they see it and they might be on rate with you like that example i said with michelle who made that got that client within one hour she happened to message the person the person was there they had this little dialogue and ultimately they hopped on the phone and had a conversation so with my messaging strategy i'll go back and forth and i will either let it sit for intentionally sometimes i let things just calm down for a week and then i'll come back and this is where i want to get on the phone with them and actually you know convert them from that name on my community to actually someone to have a conversation to see if and how i could help them and if they potentially could be a prospect to have a conversation with me so that's the whole key this is where the magic happens so it isn't just about building community and it isn't just about messaging people okay and engaging with people this is where the money is this is where you'll actually find the client out of this process and that is by inviting people and inviting people to take the next step with you and so that's why our messaging sequence is so important to finesse and believe me one cookie cut doesn't fit all it takes time to figure out what's the right message message that you can post or send that people will react to and that they'll respond to in the right way that actually continues the relationship so you're trying to develop this relationship through messenger and it takes a little bit of tweaking so work on that and that's one of the magic pieces that when i work with my clients we spend a lot of time kind of testing and tweaking the message until we get it right until we get the responses that we're looking for and so Ultimately, we want to invite people to have a conversation with us. So remember we said we couldn't pitch, we couldn't out and out sell, but we can invite. And when we invite, that's when we actually get permission. So I might send a message, for example, I might say something like, hey, I've got something cool or cool opportunity coming up that I think it might be able to help you. I'm not sure though, are you interested in finding out more? And that, I'll type that out and send that to someone. Now, I use curiosity a lot. Usually when I send something, it's kind of curious and interesting like that. You know, someone says they're thinking about me and they have something that might help me and would I like to know more? Of course, I'm gonna say, sure, what is it? And so when people come back and they say, sure, what is it? I might, at that point, I don't suddenly send them a whole sales pitch, okay? We don't do that yet. We still want to kind of, you know, if we're using a fishing metaphor, we wanna hook the bait and kind of reel them in slowly. Uh, and that sounds really bad, but honestly, we want to continue the dialogue. And so what I might send to them after that, I might say, well, and then ask them a question. I might say, well, what are your revenue goals for this year? Because if they're only, you know, a $30,000 business, they're not going to be a client of mine. Okay. That's not the client that I'm targeting. So I might say, hey, well, how much revenue are you targeting this year? Now, it doesn't ask them how much money they're making today. That might be too personal of a question. So once again, you have to think about what type of question would somebody likely feel comfortable to answer if they've only had a short dialogue with you through messenger so you might ask them that question or you might even come back and say you know it's a bit of a pitch is that okay and i've done that as well and so they go yeah okay what is it so they want to find out what it is and then for me i'm not a fan of texting and i never believe that paper sells as i call that when i had my employment agency which i grew um from startup to multi-million dollar business and then sold it. And I had hired sales teams over the years. My salespeople always said, paper doesn't sell. <laughs> like words on paper don't sell. Um, sending messages at one point won't work. Now, of course, if you have a low end product and it's a click and buy, like an ebook for something for $4.99 or $49, $500, $4.97 or whatever, if it's a small end, low end price project, yeah, click and buy can work. But if the price point that I'm selling at, generally speaking, I want to do it through conversation because it's a fit. Do they fit for me and do I fit for them? And so I will send the message back rather than saying what my offer is. I will say, hey, I'd rather talk than type. You got time to hop on the phone. 
and I will get them off of Messenger and into a sales appointment with me. And that's where we really want to get to. We want to get to that permission base. Now, once again, you have to look at your sales process and whether you feel comfortable making your offer by email or by messenger or texting, or whether you, know, you want to send them a link to the website. Uh, if that works for you, good. Go, you know, good on you, go for it. Or if you want to have a higher end product and you want to have a conversation with them, then of course you want to get them off of messenger and into a conversation. But the point that I want to make here is that it's an invitation. You always invite people and get their permission before you pitch them. You don't ever want to have that pitch because remember, you're going to be that salesy weirdo and no one will be happy at that point. I'm going to pause here. Roger, any questions while I sip some water? Roger is on mute. I think he's 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 stepped away. Maybe we're we're all no no, no, no. I'm, to, I'm totally here. There are no more questions. Okay, good. I always do that with my assistant. I always throw it to her, and she's like, "I'm on mute." Anyways, okay, all right. So that's kind of the 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 end of it in the sense that we want to always get permission before we make an offer, and we want to get people on a phone conversation. So this is how the prospecting tool of social media will work phenomenally well for you. So I'm going to ask you this question again. And the question is, imagine if you could 2x or more your revenue in 90 days. Who here would love that opportunity? Who here would love to be able to do that using social media marketing to grow their business? And there, I just want to put in the chat, hell yes, if that's the case. I don't think I can see the chat when I've got my, my slides up. So I'm, I'm blinded by the light. Uh, on what the chat is. Oh, there I can see it now. Yeah, we're getting some hell yes is great. I love that thing. Uh, I'll, someone made a comment about the birthday thing works well. Yes, but, but I don't know. It's kind of a, an uncomfortable thing for me. Whoops. Um, well, I'm moving my thing too often, too much there. So yeah, social media will work for you. And I know I covered a whole lot really fast. So some things to consider are always making the connection keeping it human, keeping it real, using post engagements. I only shared one of six that we use in my, in my program. Uh, it's a great way to get people to engage. So you, they come to the conversation rather than you looking for them in that conversation. Engage like they're real and use curiosity and an invitation before you ever make an offer. So if you wanted to double or 2x or 5x your revenue, revenue in the next 90 days, I have actually an invitation for you. And my invitation is my Revenue Accelerator program. And it's a 90-day program. It's a group program. And there's five things that we focus on in the program. And the first thing is a winning mindset. You know, frankly, it all starts with what's in here about your ability to grow your business. And so we need to unplug a lot of our mindset and a lot of our belief systems that are holding us back from making more money. Uh, that really is a key piece of it. Oops, oh, it went away. Uh, the second thing we cover is what I call my Formula One system. The Formula One system is so cool because it helps you gain more clarity and focus and it really removes things that are getting in your way of being successful. And in the Formula One, some of the things that we uncover is we start with the what. What is it you're selling so that you actually create the marketing message and the offer that's going to address the who piece in the sense of who are you trying to target because when you get the what and the who in alignment that's when the magic begins to happen and you'll find it easier to sell and to grow your business and a lot of people miss that we just kind of get out there and we start selling our stuff without really giving it the consideration that we need to to really figure out who needs this and then how do we need to package it so it makes sense for that person to want to buy it and then also with the pricing Without fail, one of the biggest impacts I make out with my clients is, you know, is changing their pricing model. And some clients have actually, you know, 10 times their rates in a very short period of time, or at least doubled their rates. I mean, it's crazy how we can repackage an offer and finesse it and target it to the right people. And instantly, the person, like almost overnight, doubles their revenue. 
And so that's one of the pieces of the Formula One that I think is so exciting and the potential it has for most businesses is when you figure out the what, the who, and then we move to the how, how do we market it? How do we find those clients? Now that we've got our packaging and our pricing and our marketing message in alignment, that's when the magic happens. And that's the Formula One method that I go through with my clients. And then of course, lead gen, which is what we did today. Now I shared as much as I could in the short time we had, but there is way more nuances and details to it and as much as some of the verbiage I shared with you may or may not work the first time out it takes some finessing and tweaking and I talked about the post engagements well in my program we talk about six different types of post engagements so that we're really putting the visibility as well as the lead generation on our on our social media platforms and therefore attracting the right prospects to us number four is sales conversion yeah, after selling for 30 years or more than that in my life, I'm going to date myself. Um, selling is a, is a fine art and it takes some skill to be able to get the right prospects, but then to have that sales conversation. So we dig into that in the revenue accelerator as well. And then finally, the truth of the matter is, as much as we have five things that we cover off, the first four we do very, very quickly because the bulk of the 90 days is all about implementation information this is not an information course this is not a course that you come and you're going to learn all sorts of things yes you will learn a lot but it's always through application and implementation you just don't get information and then go away and do nothing with it we have to implement it and so this program is set up and designed in a container of success where you'll work with other a very small group of successful entrepreneurs doing the same thing you are and the target is how much revenue can you make in 90 days you set a goal and then you work that and you work it to the end that you will make that money in 90 days. And so whether you're trying to get a 20% or 50% or 100% revenue growth, that's what you've set up as your target. We look at the Formula One and we see what's realistic and what's possible. And then we craft your plan and you go work the plan. And the implementation thing, I have this really cool spreadsheet that tracks all of your activity so that you're not just being busy, but you're being productive and you're doing the high yield activities that will give you the biggest bang for your buck. And so that's the 90 day revenue accelerator. Now it is not for everybody, I'll be honest. It is for a successful business owner who's probably at or near the 6K figure uh, level, at least not near the 100,000 level, and they really want to up level their business to greater growth. And so you also need to have a product that you're selling. You have to have something that people want and it's a good quality product that you can put out there in the marketplace. And it has to be at the price point that makes sense. So if you're selling $49 something rather, this would not be for you. But if you are actually trying to grow your business and to accelerate it, then this could be a perfect opportunity for you to grow it. Uh, the group program starts in September. The pricing is ridiculously, I think, a very valued pricing. It comes with a group call. There's 13 weeks of calls. We also have a whole day jumpstart um, sessions where you get through the Formula One. You get private coaching with me one on one. And at the end of the day, you will make more money because that is the goal and that's the focus. It's all about implementation. So if you're interested in wanting to explore that with me, I'm going to invite you to connect with me. You can go to suclement.com forward slash chat. And I think Roger's going to post that in the chat box. <laughs> um, but if you go to that URL, suclement.com forward slash chat, and then just fill out the form and that will trigger us to connect with you and get you on my calendar so we can have a brief conversation. This is not a click and buy program. It is by only by invitation where we have a conversation to see if I'm a fit for you and whether you're a fit for the program. Or of course, you can always email me and suclement.com. So I'm going to pause here and see if anyone has any questions about the Revenue Accelerator. I'd be happy to answer them or any unfinished questions about what we covered tonight. Because I know, as I said, I went through very quickly, a lot of detail, a lot of information, gave you the high notes, just enough to be dangerous and get out there. So I'm going to pause here if there's questions, but don't leave yet because I have a gift for all of you, a free gift that uh, I'll share with you in a moment. So I'm just going to drink some water here and see what Roger has to say. No questions uh, to uh, pose to you, Sue, sorry. Okay, no questions and that's good. I've done my job. And so my free gift for everyone is actually, it is my social media marketing guide and it is complete with examples and sample scripts 
of those messages that you want to send out to people. And you can request your copy there, suplement.com forward slash gift. And you can request it there. Now, one thing I will ask is the sample scripts. Don't just cut and paste them and use them verbatim or they won't work because if everyone's doing them, you'll lose the nuances. Remember, we want to treat people like they're real, like they're human. And so we want to make sure that it's in our own voice and it's speaking to our prospects. Because if you, know, if you just use somebody else's scripts, it doesn't work. It's not your voice. People won't resonate with it the same. That's one thing about social media is, you know, we talk about being authentic and, you know, really having that vulnerability in our business. And so you want to make sure that what you write and what you send is from you. So they are meant just to give you some guidelines, but nonetheless, they will certainly point you in the right direction and give you some great tools and resources to leverage your social media connections. So that's where you can get your gift from me. And that's for everybody here. And Roger, if there's no more questions, then I think we're done. And I'll just leave this up here. This is my, how you can connect with me on social media. I do have a Facebook group. Um, and I invite you to join my Facebook group. It's Think and Grow Like a CEO. That's our Facebook group, uh, where we continue the dialogue and the connections there. So you were uh, billed as uh, someone who provides words of wisdom, and you certainly lived up to that reputation. Uh, there are uh, no more questions, so I thank you on behalf of VBN, everyone attending and guests. Uh, and uh, we are very appreciative of what you've told us and you're getting in the chat all sorts of, Sue, we love you. Sue, thank you. <laughs> Sue, you're amazing. Uh, Sue, you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. And such a compliment is something I would wear as a badge of honor. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Roger. And thanks everyone for watching live or after the fact. I appreciate that. And of course, if you have any questions at any time, don't hesitate to reach out. Connect with me on Facebook or LinkedIn or of course in my Facebook group. I'm here to be a service to you. And I actually did mention this earlier tonight, but mm -hmm. the first and the third Wednesday of the night, I do a live training on Zoom. So you can find that on my website as well. Thank you, Sue, and uh, VBN members and guests, uh, we very much appreciate you giving us your time and trusting us with your evening. We hope that you got a high return on investment. Good night, Sue. Good night, all. Bye.